I'm speaking on the on the on the subject of the money is coming. The money is coming. Oh yes, it is. So, are you ready for receiving what God has ordained for you? Because He's 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 ordained for us to have a lot, you know. We're not supposed to just be living in any kind of struggling mode of life. That's nonsense. That's for people that don't understand a lot of things. It's like, there's no way that you can really walk with God, please God, grow up, become more mature, and then you're still, you know, living a a low-luster life, lackluster life. No. It's not supposed to be like that. Now, money comes through a lot of... uh, Ways there's the biblical economic system, which um, we have to work with. You know, you know. Some people said prayer alone, you know, is not going to uh, fix everything. You know, you need to do some fasting, of course. Yeah, that's in the spiritual realm. But then in the natural realm, you need to do things like working with the biblical economic system, and then you also need to be doing certain work then you need to get the revelation that you need to monetize life. So as I was saying, I love this backdrop that I found this. It wasn't someone else that found this. All these gold bars here, just I did a rough count estimate of how much of each, each bar is 27 pounds, $2,000 per ounce. There's 400 ounces in a, in a bar, and maybe there's about easily 400 bars. So that would be about $2.9 billion. BBB billion US dollars and this is really doing something to my imagination now this is all virtual reality so if you think this is real how I wish I could just uh, you know reach up and grab one and go look at that but one day uh, the, 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 the vision will become a reality so what's the biggest nation in the world The biggest nation is the imagination, what's in the mind of man. It's bigger than any nation because every nation on earth came from some kind of, uh, how would you say, some kind of culture, philosophy, work that people did to get, uh, you know, where they were going. What they built as societies and nations, some very evil, some very good. You know, we call uh, affectionately, well, maybe not so affectionately, the, the goat nations and the sheep nations, you know. I don't want to get into all that. I, I'm talking about, I, I tell you, the realm of the spirit is powerful because when you walk in the power of the realm of the spirit, you can attract things to yourself. Big things in big ways, but you know, I I want to talk about tangible reality of resources. I'm noticing that in the body of Christ and in reality, there's a big need for resources. Oh, yes. Big, huge. I mean, uh, just resources needed, you know. And some things you you can't do based on, you know, uh, a spiritual tone or thought or whatever. You need, um, you need the tangible reality of having, you know, physical, physical hard cash, money, resources, lands, properties, buildings, equipment, people, help, staff. Creative wisdom, ideas, ways of doing things, you know. You need some, some capital for all of it. It doesn't mean that you have to be like a, a, a gazillionaire and a mega millionaire to start anything. No, people start with nothing, but they started with their big nation, the imagination. They got a dream and they worked it. You know, you hear the stories of somebody that started out with nothing, you know, the... The, the big millionaire moguls that 
you know, slept on the, in, in their office or on, in the car or whatever, you know, slept on the floor. They, you know, they're doing stuff. Like even Elon Musk, I mean, he's crazy, would stay in his office. Thomas Edison, let me talk about Thomas Edison, the great inventor. Uh, I was at his house in Fort Myers, Florida, which became a museum now. It's an amazing place. He had the first uh, most luxurious car in the world at that time, the 1929 Cadillac, uh, and uh, it had velvet seats. It was like the Rolls Royce of the day, you know. And it's in his house, you know, and he had that to drive around. It looks like a funny, almost looks like a toy car now. But back then, that was the, you know, the top, the top car you can get on earth at that time. His friend was his next door neighbor was Henry Ford, who made the Ford Motor Company, you know, the creator of cars. So you have to, you have to understand something. Um, you know, who you're friends with means a lot. You know, if you're friends with an idiot, your Id idiocy will rub off on you. If you have someone that doesn't have any creative brilliance and you, you look at them, the environment of where you're at, you know, will do something to you. On my TikTok channel, there's a clip that just got uploaded a couple of hours ago uh, of your environment, you know. And the Lord spoke to me, says, your environment will either pollute you or promote you depending on what it is. You must have a good, productive, brilliant environment if you're going to get anywhere in life. You know, so you got to watch your address book and who you're, who you're hanging around with, you know. You want to grow up, go up, fly high, then you need to be with people that are like that. You need to take stock and assessment and analyze yourself and say, well, how am I doing in my own psyche, in my own realm? Am I okay? You know, sometimes you, you don't feel okay because things are out of sorts. So what is the Lord, what does the Lord come and say? He says, be encouraged, stay faithful, stay with it, because those that are who are willing and obedient to my plan will eat the good of the land. And you have to be careful to be obedient to do all that God wants you to do, because if you refuse to do, it doesn't just say that you rebel or resist or uh, fight against it, but just refusing to do what God wants causes you to be devoured. And that has happened a lot. There's been a lot of deception, a lot of deceptive people. But let me, let me speak for a minute. La last Sunday I did a message on, uh, I called it Successful Spiritual Warfare, and from the victorious side. And the Lord says the righteous are going to be blessed. I, t I taught on this before. I have other prophetic messages on this. The righteous are going to be blessed. The wicked are going to be cursed. I mean, the righteous are going to flourish and the wicked are going to be cut off, man. Crushed, washed away. So you're a thief, a con, a liar, a fool. Your future is very dark and destruction is coming to hunt you. The, the realm of devastation of God's judgment and wrath called destruction, we can name it destruction, is coming for you who have offended God's own elect and done evil things to them. So don't think you laugh, oh, I got this, I got that, ha, 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 I got over on them. You didn't get over on nothing. In fact, you didn't even get over on yourself because yourself is going to have the experience of crashing down, crashing and burning and it's being invoked and released. You know, I started having a conversation a while ago with one of my dear friends, one of my people, and they were like, uh, I said, I can't talk about this right now. You know, we, talk, we started to get into something about this and that and that, and I said, eh. I'm not going to go into this conversation right now. I'm still in the studio. We're about to go live again, even at this late hour, because uh, we were so busy the whole day, and, and now I just thought, I have two choices. One, go to bed, lay down, watch a conference, you know, that I'm in the middle of watching, an anointed conference, or, or switch this on and go for it. So uh, it's a little bit different, it's a little bit of an unusual flow and message here. And of course, my decorative backdrop here is brilliant. This is a multi-billion dollar set. 
virtual reality. So I just have to say in case anybody would think, oh, wow, where's, where's the treasure vault? No, this is all like a picture image, all of this here. See? But I like it because it paints a picture. Now, if it was real, do you think I'd sit here and show you and then let you know where I'm at? <laughs> Having all this treasure behind me, you know, I, I don't think I would display it, you know. You know, the old saying of don't tell people really what you're doing or what, you know. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. That's in the, that's in the laws of success teaching. Right now, I want to speak prophetically on the money is coming. The money that I need, the money that you need, the real resources, it's coming. God said so in so many volumes of messages. He said so in so many ways. He said so in so many ways. And, and people just need to understand that. You know, there's a lot of people that interacted with me in a funny way, some good, some bad, that are going to experience the pleasure or the, or the devastation of loss, depending on which way they went, you know. I'm always looking at people to see how loyal they are, how faithful they are, how serious they are, their attitude. They have a persevering attitude. They, they, they're involved in what we're doing. They stick with it. You know, you're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed. And there's a lot of people that don't. You know, they just... And then there's people that do criminal things and evil things against good people. They're going to crash and burn. You know, so God has... I said three different realms there. The loyal and the faithful, they're going to get blessed. The people with the right attitude, you know. And then there's the wrong kind of p people and they're going to get thrown away. And uh, good, we say good to it all, whichever way it goes. God has these uh, realms of operation in his own plan, you know? So you have to say, okay, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the one who's weary and, I mean, not weary and well-doing. I mean, I'm going to be the one who's, pers I meant to say persevering, persevering and not weary and well-doing. For I'm going to reap in due season as I don't faint. Oh, yes. It's real. And God, it's not that God wants to test us so much, but maybe he does. You know, remember when he told, a scriptural example, remember Genesis when he told Abraham, take your son Isaac, go up in the mountain and make him a sacrifice. And he was, had the knife, he picked it up, he made the fire and the wood, and the, you know, he was about to light the fire to burn the son, a promise that he waited for for so long. And God said, whoa, don't do it, don't harm the lad. And he sent an angel with a ram in the thicket to say, no, stop, don't harm the lad. And God spoke and said to him after that, he said, now I know that you love me, Abraham, above everything else. So that, of course, that of course was a test. Okay, no problem. Hakuna matata, hakuna shida. It's a test. That means no problem for you at all and no problem for me. Shida is me and matata is like, no problem, man. You know, what did he say in Spanish? No problem. I forget how to say it now. What's the word in Spanish? But I'm speaking too much Swahili. I forgot my Spanish. I, I, it'll come back to me later. I'm not getting it in my mind right now. Anyway, not time for Span the Spanish world. I'm in the, uh, in the, dealing with the Africans. So, the Lord is... And the rest of the world. God bless you everywhere you're watching from every country. You can let me know where you're watching from. This video will go far. So, uh, the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. He wants to bless us. He wants to provide for us. And He takes pleasure in the prosperity of His servant. He takes pleasure in the prosperity of His servants. If you're His servant... He wants to bless you, and he wants to be feeling pleasure from all that you're experiencing in good ways in life. Everything that you're getting a hold of that's good in life, God intended it for you. Now, this is a mature kind of message because, you know, people that are too religious or too weird and they don't think you know that God really wants to make you rich that you don't understand the plan of God yet you know it said the scripture says in Proverbs 10:22 God 
is is not a, a child. He, he's not a child abuser. He doesn't want to. He, he he doesn't want his children to be suffering. You know, only an evil parent would would want good things for their children. Even the scripture says, "You being evil, human, and messed up in some ways, want good things for your children." Well, if that's the case, how much more the Father God wants great things for us? You ask him for a piece of bread, will he give you a stone? You ask him for a fish, will he give you like a, a, a salamander or a lizard? Or Why would he do that? So much brilliance is available to the human race to work in things in business, to prosper, to set up systems and all that. And, and shouldn't we do it? Shouldn't we receive from the mind of God and begin to do all great things? Yes. If you don't create a system for your work life and your personal life and your corporate life and your business life and your, you know, your mission and your calling or whatever it is God has for you to be doing, whatever your assignment and mission is, then you're not going to be able to do a lot. So create the system. Somebody called that, a great business mind that I know, a friend of mine, he called that planning. Planning is laborious. You know, writing uh, notes and systems and goals and dreams and what you call it, business plans and operations manuals and, you know, ways of doing things. That, that, that takes a lot to do that. But if you don't do it, you're just running haphazardly uh, and things. And someone said a, a moment of procrastination or diversion or whatever from what you're doing can really break your flow and kill momentum that you, you know, you, uh, you lose traction in, in what you're doing. And that's very unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. You're not supposed to do that in the journey. You're not supposed to uh, lose momentum. So there's practical laws, which I call the laws of success, the laws of success. There's practical ways of doing things that you can think of tangible systems to use on how to get blessed. It's not all spiritual, but it comes from the spirit. The mind of God comes in the spirit and then you implement it in the natural. And here's another sad, re a really cold, stone-cold reality. Really, really vicious reality. God allows what you allow. You know, if you want something good to happen in your life, you have to, you, you have to rise up and make it happen. You know? It doesn't just come by chance. Like there's a saying, destiny is not left up to chance, but it's a matter of choice. So I like to say the destiny determinator you know, I preached on that one time. I have a whole series on that. I want to put some of that in the book that I'm writing, another book that I'm writing. That your destiny is based on your decision-making uh, brilliance. And God's brilliant, and he ma he's made us brilliant. So what are we waiting for? You know, there's not... And here's another thing about this timing issue. People think God has a timing for everything. No, the time is now. Everything you could do now is now. You know, don't just look at things as a, a process of learning. Look at things also as a time of loss. You lost some time along the way. And now you have to do, you have to run as hard and fast as you can to make it up and redeem the time. Jesus said, redeem the time for the days are evil. You know. So I prophesy the money is coming. The money is coming. This is volume 66. In the book that I'm writing on this, I wanted to have 65 chapters and the 66th chapter to be uh, and the money came, dot, 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 and that's the end of the book. But no matter what, where I end on how many numbers, that'll still be the last page. It won't be a chapter, but it'll be a page. And the money came, dot, dot, dot. The money is coming, you get it? And then the last word in the book will be, and the money came, dot, dot, dot. And now we're able to, 
embark upon all that God has ordained for us to do and to get done. Can you say a big amen? God, the, the plans I have for you, says the Lord, are to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you a, a brilliant um, expected destination. A brilliant place. An abundance of life. You see this on the side of me here. This is billions of dollars worth of gold. I estimated it to be nearly 3 billion, about 2.9 billion US dollars worth of gold. Again, this is virtual. I wish the bricks were real and on either side of me and I can, you know, each, each bar here that you see is, uh, is 27 pounds each. So just to hold one that's, something that's 27 pounds, just one, that's heavy. If you were to take them all and put them into one crate or uh, container, whatever, the weight of it was, would be like thousands of tons. You know? Hundreds of tons, whatever. A ton is 2,000 pounds. And an ounce of gold now in the world's uh, sale price is over two, about $2,000 an ounce. And there's 400 ounces in one bar, which is 27 pounds. 27 pounds times 16, it's got to be right. 27. One pound, okay, so 16 times 27, let's try that. Yeah, 432. So if it's a little more, it's going to be about 432. Okay, so that's, uh, yeah, times, uh, I calculated 800 and, Four thirty two times eight a zero 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 zero. Uh, huge numbers. So the fact that this is available, sorry, I got it diverted into that plane with my calculator. This reality of this is in the earth. And you see stupid things, like I just saw a guy, uh, Jacob, Mr. Jacob, Jacob & Co. He made one watch, is $20 million. Who on earth would buy a watch and wear $20 million on your wrist? Just some crazy billionaire, you know? I mean, it's a billionaire thing. Two, um, $20 million. It had 432 yellow diamonds in it, that, that watch, and it's diamonds all the way around, and... Big, gaudy, audacious thing. $20 million. And then they made, they got these Richard Mill watches now. That like the one was, the girl was wearing, it was $660,000 for one watch. That's also the price of a Rolls Royce Phantom car. The new 2024 model. You know, you don't buy those things at that speed. I mean, it's, not, I don't know. Cars depreciate. Man, if you buy a new Rolls, you got, just, you got money to throw away. You got to buy one that's several years old in good shape. And you'll, you'll get it for like uh, such a lower percentage of the price. The new Rolls is 660, the Phantom. 660,000. And one that's like, uh, how many years old? 2000 and... Well, an older model could be, you could get it for about ninety or $100,000. So that's like less than one-sixth the price, you know? 
and you're going to miss some of the accoutrements of upgrades, but the difference in prices is, is pathetic. And then some parts of the world, like some people in Africa, where are you going to drive a Rolls Royce? You can't drive. You'd ruin it, and how would you maintain it, you know? The roads are in such bad shape. But you know what? I, got to, I just have to say, as I'm talking about this, the sky's the limit. Actually, the sky's the limit because heaven is above that. So the limit, again, is in your, the limitation or the acceleration or the advantageous opportunity of success in big ways is in your imagination, which again, I'll tell you, I'll tell you again, is the biggest nation in the world, in your mind. Now, I love this kind of message, this kind of flow, because this is what the Holy Ghost that's what the Holy Ghost is saying. You know, it's just brilliant that he wants to bless us so much. I'm encouraged. I've had a long day. I've had a long week. I've had a long life. Uh, and we're not nearly done. We have decades left should the Lord tarry, but it looks like we're kind of entering in the last days. But I got to say, what we need to do, we need to do it now. Jesus even told Judas he didn't want to wait. That what you do is do quickly, you idiot. You're going to betray me? Whoa. It would be better for you had you never been born, son. And you know what that means? That he didn't make heaven. Judas Iscariot did not make heaven, and I'll prove it to you scripturally. I can prove it. I know what I'm saying. Biblically, now, if you don't have Bible, forget it. Opinion, what does opinion mean? You know, you could have a, a philosophy or a thought, and that could be right or it could be very wrong. But if you have chapter and verse in Bible, especially when Jesus said something, let me explain to it. It would be better for you, Judas, if you'd never been born. What does it mean? What does it mean? It means that he didn't go to heaven. Because even if he died, even if he hung himself, his guts out, his his, his, his skin ripped and his, his insides came out. I mean, how horrible. He had torment. He went and hung himself. He was in such emotional distress. He had such a bad day, such a bad moment, such a foolish uh, thing that he did. But if he died and went to heaven, would it been better? Would it have been better if he'd never been born? No. It still would have been good that he was born because he got to go to paradise. Even though a rough way to get there, but he got there. So that proves it that he didn't get there. Who else didn't go to heaven? Saul the king. You know why? Because in the scripture, Samuel the prophet saw him down below, in a below place downstairs, with the witch of Endor. What was he doing with her? The witch of Endor. What was he doing with her if he was in heaven? Was that Abraham's bosom waiting to be, you know, taken up to paradise? What, the place that they called paradise? Prophetically paradise? No. It wasn't. I heard a man, he died, went to hell, and he had visions in hell. You saw things. Well, you saw things. You literally went there. He died for a while, and then God brought him back. I don't know. It's one of those amazing experiences. But he said he saw Adolf Hitler burning, screaming, like with his, you know. You know, he used to do speeches, rah, 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 screaming as the flesh was burning off him, and then it kind of reappeared, and he burnt again. And he was full of anger and rage and shouting, in torment, screaming, angry, blaspheming. And guess what? He gets to do that for all of eternity. Why would a man that killed 50, responsible for the deaths of 50 million people and was on a murderous rampage, even to the point of his death, uh, you know, turn around and say, uh, you know, I'm really sorry and, oh, Jesus, forgive me. He could almost see how likely it was that that didn't happen, you know, because he was in the wrong side of things. So, I want to stick up for the righteous life, to live righteously, to live in the plan of God. You know, we have to come to the place where God blesses us. Can you say amen? Even with this kind of stuff here. Land and property and help and vehicles and equipments and 
staff and the dream team and people and resources and money and just flourishing in every good way. Can you say amen? Now, when I speak like this prophetically, I'm also painting the, you know, painting the sky with the words, painting the canvas of life. And I've chosen this. I've accepted this, God, and I've accepted the scripture. Uh, a while ago, when I thought I was going to entitle this, The Money is Coming, Volume 66, this is the 66th video message on this topic. I have 65 video messages that I made, one after the other, day by day, took on about two months. More than two months, two and a half months, probably. Because I didn't do it seven days a week. 65 days probably took go upwards of two and a half to three months. One after the other. I didn't do any other topic of teaching in that time. Every next time I went live and did a broadcast or a message, it was the money is coming, the next volume, the next volume. I didn't throw any in between. It was just one that I, that I can recall. Maybe I did one or two. Like uh, if, if the Lord did it, I don't remember. But it was right like that. And God, what, when God is speaking these kind of things, is he teasing us? Or is he, is he reminding us that the silver and the gold is mine, saith the Lord, and I want to bless you and make you rich? Blessing of the Lord makes me rich and has no sorrow. Now let me get back to Proverbs 18. There's a Proverbs 18 somewhere. It says, The wise walk with the wise and become wiser, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. You got to look at your environment. The Lord spoke to me one time and he said, he said, son, I want you to tell my people this and I've done it around the world. He says, your environment will either pollute you or promote you depending on what it is. And a while ago, I, I, rem I was reminded of this vision I had in the heavenly realm uh, some time back. And I saw a vision, I call it the vision of the gold coins. Now, the Lord walked around this big wall. It's a long story, and I'm too tired to share the whole thing. I'll say it another day. I'm trying to get through this here and get off here, and I'm going to take off in a, in a few moments. I'm going to be signing off, and we'll pick this up another day. But the Lord spoke to me about a lot. Of, he was talking to me about a lot of things that were his purpose. And he had this... Uh, this thought going on in his mind, I can feel his mind, you know, in this realm of the spirit, everything is, the communication realm was open. And he was saying, like, telling me all these things, and he's like, oh, yeah, I know you need resources, son. You really want it? Like, he was a little bit like, he's like, by the way, he's a little bit annoyed. He, I kind of felt like this from the heart of the father. It was the father, because I couldn't see his face. He was standing on the other side of a big wall made out of solid pearl, or whatever it was, it, it was just, it was just amazing. And uh, he came around the side, and I couldn't see his face, but I could see part of his body. And it wasn't Jesus, and it wasn't the Holy Spirit. It was the Father, because he was like, I can't explain it. In the physical realm of in the spirit, he was bigger than a six-foot-tall man. You know, the body that we can imagine, maybe the Holy Spirit would stand in a person if he has that shape. Or... Uh, Jesus himself in the form of a man. The father was bigger. I don't know if you would say he was so many more feet tall or wide or huge, but the hugeness of his person, it wasn't Jesus, it wasn't the Holy Spirit. I know the difference. It was the father in this vision. He was on the other side of this wall and he was talking to me about a lot of things, about the calling and purpose and assignment. He's like, oh yeah. And he said, he said something like this. He said, he said, he said, you, you, want, you, want, you want resources, you, want, you need this, I know you need it. And he felt like it was like he was trying to be in a hurry. And he took a bunch of gold coins. I'm telling you, there were so many that could have broke somebody's bones. He threw them like on the ground. Whoo! And they came flying around the wall, you know, toward me. And I can see them and they just literally, many of them hit my feet and scattered all around, and it was so many. It was like, I don't know if it was thousands of coins. It might have been that many. And it was like so much. I mean, the amount of wealth that it was. You see here, the, all this gold here. I, I have a, an affinity for it. I have a, uh, what, what do you call it, an affection for, for, for great things, you know. 
and so be it, it's great. I'm a five-star general, naturally and spiritually. What can I say? Yeah, and God's elected me to this office and to this walk with him, even to bring this out to the body of Christ, to teach on wealth transfer, wealth creation, the power to get wealth, according to Deuteronomy 8.18. It's great. I'm anointed for that. I'm anointed for that. And the business people and high-level people that are doing things in life, I, wanna, I prophesy over them, and uh, they begin to get new breakthroughs in all kinds of ways. It is fabulous, okay? And I was just on the phone with a great woman of God today. We're going to plan some uh, events in a very affluent area, as well as down in the city, and as well as we do help the poor and the children and all that. We, we do a lot of different things, but there's a place where the affluent people can, uh, can hook up, and we can minister to them. So... There was so much uh, in these gold coins. There was so much wealth, so much treasure. And the Lord said, here, take it, hurry up. You know, because he was busy about his purpose. So what does it mean, the vision of the gold coins? It means he's Jehovah Jireh. He wants to provide all this gold for us. He wants to give us treasures. Yeah. So the Lord is interested in us being wealthy for the purpose of what? So we can fulfill his assignment. I was starting to say earlier, prosperity is a big word, but let me tell you what a definition, a real uh, down-to-earth but sober-minded definition of prosperity is this, having enough of God's provision and supply to do His will on the earth, to fulfill what He wants us to, to, to do, to have, to become, to accomplish, Say a big amen, you know? And that's not, that's not a small thing, you know? <laughs> there's, a, there's projects and programs and things we need to get done. You ask, prophesy over your life. I'm prophesying over your life right now. I hope you're catching this. The Lord is good and His mercy and those forever and He wants to bless us. Now, I don't know every way that it's going to happen. I just know that it's going to happen. One thing about God, you can talk to him about what you need. He already knows what we need. The Father knows we have need of these things called resources. And, but you can't always tell God who, what, or how, or, or exactly what moment it's going to happen. You just say, I just need everything right now. I need everything right now, you know. I'm not going to wait. I can't wait. There's work to be done. So, Lord, you, you, need to, you need to get busy and help us. And Isaiah 45, 11, there's a very powerful verse of Scripture that says, concerning the work of my hands, you command me. So God was even saying, hey, I want you to talk to me. I want you to tell me what it is you want to see happen, and I'll, I'll accelerate things for you. He said, concerning my sons or people on the earth, I'll show you things to come in the realm of what I'm going to do with all of them. So that's part of the prophetic grace, to command, to decree. Amen. But even a person that just has faith, you don't have to be prophetic. You don't have to be a prophet. You don't have to be a, even in the fivefold ministry, you just be a believer filled with the Holy Ghost and you can begin to... Uh, Command things to be. So all of us need to do some work in the realm of the Spirit. We need to command things and resources to come to us in Jesus' name. I want to tell you again, the money's coming. Can you say a big amen? It really is coming? Wow. It's coming. Just like I'm big, I'm six foot four. I used to weigh more than I do now. I got quite skinny. See? Can't really see the, well, the big thing. I can't stand up here, but you see? And you uh, could lose a little couple more inches around the waist, but, you know, I'm much thinner and less in kilos or whatever than I was at one point in life. Never was uh, 
so much overweight, but and everybody could lose a few pounds. It's good to get skinny. Fasting and praying is good. It's good for the physical health and to live a fasted life, you know. Now, if you're really, really skinny and your metabolism is so high, you can just, you know, eat a little food. It's okay. But some people really need to tone some things down and just get more, more lean. Yeah, it'll help you in a lot of ways. So the Lord is uh, really interested in our, in our progress. He wants us to have great health. We must have. He wants us to have great wealth. We have to have. He wants us to have great uh, experiences in life and pleasure in life. We must have. He wants us to be blessed. It might, you must have. And there's a realm of something that's needed to take care of your life that you're not stressed out. You're flush. You're flourishing in every good way. And you, you, um, you see how far that goes back? It's stupendous how much there is in this in this uh, studio, virtually speaking, virtually speaking. Look at that, Whoa, all the way back. Wow. So the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever and he wants to bless us. Yeah. The big life that you dreamed about, that you've been waiting to have, you can have it. It's possible and it must, it must come to pass. It, it just shouldn't like be in the realm of I'm dreaming and hoping for it all the time. No, you got to get to the point where it really comes forth. Say a big amen. All right, I'm uh, glad to cover this part again. This is volume 66. I like 66. I thought I wanted to end there because 66 is the number of books in the Bible. 66 is the number of chapters in the prophet Isaiah. Really phenomenal. But I was reminded again today about this vision that I had of Jehovah Jireh, the vision of the gold coins. He threw them at my feet and said, here, take it. And we need that right now. So I speak right now prophetically and I say we break anything that's tried to limit us or hinder us or keep any resources from us that we need. And we, we, we're going we're gonna to take it by force. Whatever it is we want, whatever it is we need, whatever it is it is that we must have, we have to have it, and we're going to have it now in Jesus' mighty name. Can you say a huge amen to that? And the Lord wants us to have it. This is the, this is the amazing thing about God. He wants us to be superbly blessed in every good way. That's the heart of the Father. His love for us wants to make us prosper. John the Beloved was one who, the Bible says he, he leaned his head on, uh, he, he leaned his head on Jesus' chest, you know, he was very close to him all the time. John, the Apostle John, the great Apostle John. And he, uh, he, uh, he said this in, in his epistle, he said, I, I wish, pray, and desire above everything else that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Imagine. Imagine that. In the imagination. He said, Beloved, I wish what? I wish, desire, and pray above everything else that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. <laughs> Father, we're human. We're on the earth. We're people. We're sheepies on the land. We're lions and warriors and great people. But we're here in this fallen world. And you have to help us, God. You have to help us. We can't get things done by ourselves. We need a Jehovah Jireh. We need Jehovah Shalom. We need El Shaddai. The God who's more than enough. My God, I feel the anointing flowing here. It's just a new realm of wave of, of, of grace flowing right now, of the Holy Ghost. Let it, let, it, let it empower us. Let it break things through. Let things begin to happen that we've been waiting to see. You know, it's, it's like God has to come on the scene and help us. If he doesn't, how are we going to get things done? 
If we don't have the resources, what are we going to do things with? And uh, it's not just that somebody's like money-minded or resource-minded or you might say materialistic nonsense. <clears throat> Everything is life in life is material. It's material and spiritual. They're like half and half. There's the spiritual realm and there's the natural realm. There's not one without the other. You know, if you forego one to have another, then you suffer in the other area. If you're too much in the natural, you miss the spiritual. Bad. Not, wrong decision. Wrong way to go. But if you're too much in the spiritual and you miss the natural, now you miss something because there's some, some things you're not going to be able to get done because you don't have the resources to do. And this, this is something God wants us to really look at. But the heart of God says to me, and I say it to you, the money is coming. The resources are coming. The gold is for us. The things that God's ordained <laughs> is there for us. Oh yes. And we need it. We need it. And we're not those, uh, uh, you know, like heathens who uh, and, and, and carnal crooks and criminals who just, you know, are looking at what they can take from people. No, we want to serve God. We want to fulfill everything that He's ordained. This is a very spiritual, uh, noble endeavor that I'm embarking upon here to talk about this. Because the wealth and the resources that are needed for us to accomplish the very plan of Almighty God, you know, in and through our lives is Is it's vital that we have those things. And without them, we can't do everything we've been called to do. So, Father, help us. You know, let your people repent too. Anything they've done wrong or blocked the way, or anybody that's blocked the way of people too, we rebuke it all in Jesus' name and say they're going to be broken out of our way. Every limitation, every witchcraft, every wrong word, every hatred, any misstep that we took in well-meaning, you know, with a good motive, but maybe it wasn't the best use of time or whatever. All that needs to be checked out right now, and then we need to sew it all up and make it into the tapestry of glory for the big picture and the vision that God has ordained for us to do, what he's ordained for us to, uh, to, to accomplish. You know, it just has to happen now. Can you say a big amen? We tell the devil, take your hands off our resources. In the name of Jesus, you're defeated. The blood of Jesus is against you. You can't do anything against the power of God. And uh, all that God has ordained is going gonna, is gonna to come to us in this very day and hour. And that's just how it is. Nothing can stop it. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. Was there a song? It was a song like that. I'm impenetrable. I didn't mean to quote that one, but I don't like... You know, it's just a funny little sound bite that I just thought of. Because it's true. I'm going all the way up. I'm on top. Nothing can stop me. I'm impenetrable. I'm invincible. I'm irresistible for the blessing. I am qualified. I am the candidate of God. I'm on the campaign to advance the kingdom of God throughout the whole world. So we must have every good thing to do it, including, you know, land, properties, resources, wealth, riches, aircraft, you know, every kind of thing and way to get the job done. We only have so much time left. The way the world's carrying on, they're trying to end the world like yesterday. But they can't do it. Guess what I'll say this, the church is the restraining force against the works of darkness. The Antichrist can't, the Antichrist and the Holy Ghost-filled church are not going to coexist in the same world. 
The rapture of Jesus Christ is going to come. He's going to catch us away for seven years. Well, great tribulation and Armageddon destroys the world, the wicked. And then we get to come back and have the millennial reign for a thousand years. And then after that, the Bible says God's going to make a new heavens and a new earth. Where that's going to be, I don't know. We'll be along for the ride, but you got to be, you got to get to heaven to get there. If you've never confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, let's do it right now. Say, Father God, in Jesus' name, I accept the free gift of eternal life that you gave through your Son when he died on the cross for me. I believe in Jesus Christ, that he died and rose again, and he's the Savior, and he's the King of glory, and he's my Savior. I confess him right now as my Savior and Lord. And I thank you, Father, that um, you forgive me of all sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And I accept the free gift of salvation. The gift of salvation, which is eternal life. By the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, it is, it is done. I'm born again. I'm saved. I accept the gift of life. The Bible says in John, I think it's 652, somewhere in there. He who has a son has life, and he who has not the son doesn't have life. the Son of God, and whoever eats of the flesh and uh, drinks of the blood of the Son of Man has eternal life, but he who doesn't, doesn't have life in him. You know? You have to accept it. It comes through confession, Romans ten seventeen. Confession is made unto salvation by us, professing and speaking out and saying, I receive the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior and my King. And my God, yes. We thank you, Lord, for many people around the world coming into the saving knowledge of Jesus. And uh, we're going to do world evangelism. Again, what is this gold and treasure for? To win souls. The Bible says, lay up, not up your things on the earth where things can corrupt them, but lay up your treasures in heaven. This tre these treasures here these treasures here that we see and whatever God wants to provide for us is going to be used, all of them are going to be used for the purpose of winning souls for the kingdom of heaven. And I'm on that mission. And some things you just can't, you, you, you just can't get. You know, unless you have the resources. But the Lord says the money is coming. Oh God, thank you for this. The money is coming. The treasures are coming. Let's lift our hands and receive. I'm going to jump off here. I love you. I'm praying for you and I'm speaking this word because this is what God wants in our world. Treasures and wealth. Enough money and cash and resources and ways of doing things that we can do everything the Master Jesus Christ has ordained for us. Our King of glory, our great I Am, the one who called us to preach the gospel according to Ephesians 4.11. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. 1 Corinthians 12.28. First apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, and then the working of miracles. And then uh, these three offices in the church. Helps administrations and governments. We need all of them to work together. And you don't hear a lot. You don't hear a lot spoken about that. Without the helps and without the administrations, and the government, which is the hierarchical structure of an organization, you can build. That's really what it means. It's not doesn't mean the civil government. Uh, what we call government in the society, because that's not from the church. You know, the church is, has its own government. So and you say amen. And it's in there administrating with brilliance the plans of action to get things done. And then you do it through servants, with servants, people that are in helps, not hirelings, that they just have a bad attitude and they're looking for money. There are people like that. But those are not the ones that are really servants of God. The people that want to serve and build the work of God. Oh my. And then... To have everything that you want to do and produce to make the work brilliant and prosperous and, 
uh, uh, fruitful, you know, productive around the world takes all these resources. So that's the purpose of it. I have to talk about the purpose of it, not just the fact, well, treasure and wealth and bling and money is coming. For what? It's to serve God, to do more for Him. That's what I want. I'll tell you straight out, that's what I want. That's my mission. That's my desire. When I look at all this, I just see opportunities. When I look at these gold bricks and bars, I, I see faces of, of, of countless multitudes of humanity coming to heaven with us. Oh, God, help us. Please, Lord. And that you give a righteous man money, he's going to produce more righteousness. You give a wicked man money, money amplifies what you are. You know, if you have the vision that's made in you that you want to do a lot of great things to advance the glory in the kingdom of God, then hey, now you, uh, you, uh, you're going to use those resources to bless humanity. I'm just thrilled about it. So this has been Money, the Money is Coming, Volume 66. Can you imagine? This is video message number 66, which is a beloved number. I didn't know I'd do it. I thought I'd stop at 65. <clears throat> and uh, many months ago, I finished that series. And it, you know, what happens, it'll just, you, you preach it out, you delivered it all, all the subtitles, subheadings, top, topic, which is going to be turned into a brilliant book that I'm writing. We're going to get done. And uh, one of the many books I'm writing, one of, the, one of the many books I'm writing. By the way, The Laws of Success, The Laws of Success, the expanded edition is coming out. And I'm writing another book about expansion and elevation for people in the body of Christ, a prophetic work. Uh, live sermons I did in great events with like uh, some meetings over 10,000 people in attendance. One was more than like 40,000 people in attendance. And uh, there, you'll see the videos are there and then this book is going to be made. Just the transcripts of, of, of the prophetic uh, sermons and messages and prophecies. It's brilliant. And it's not been done before. It's very unique. So one of the many books... The money is coming. Isn't that a great prophetic word? Oh, yes. And it really is coming. Father, our hands are out. Our hearts are open. Our accounts are waiting. Our, 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 our projects are waiting to be done. Please, Lord, grant it to us. You said the money is coming. Now, where is it? Bring it into tangible manifestation in our hands. And every limiting force or, or situation, or person, whatever. Get out of our way in Jesus' name. We break, your, we break you out and off of us, and away from us. And we thank you, Lord, that this is going to be the day and the hour when the things we've, we've just desired to have are coming to us. And we're going to see them in great manifestation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Lord, in, to finish the prayer, the, the, the declaration and the prayer on this, we told the devil to step off, and we say it strongly in Jesus' name, and every person that's his friend, all your, all your schemes, strategies, wrong words, wrong whatever, are broken and destroyed. In Jesus' name, so they're gone. And now, Lord, send your angels to cause the money to come into our hands, the wealth and the treasures like we see here, and more in different, in different expressions and manifestations. All kinds of money, all kinds of resources. It's coming to us now in Jesus' name. Things we didn't expect, things we've been expecting, things we didn't, ex we didn't expect to see. Surprises, Lord. Suddenlies and surprises. Surprises that will come suddenly are coming to us by the hand of God. The money is coming. All right, I'll pause there. I'll pick it up next time. Love you much. I'm praying. There's a sweet presence of the Lord in the atmosphere here. It's just fabulous. I trust you're feeling it. Be blessed.
with the sweetness of the love of God and all the stress you've had over money and problems and paying things and wanting to do things, it's all, it's all going to get worked out. I prophesy. I'm, you know you know me as God's prophet. I, I prophesy. Uh, it, 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 those walls are coming down. Those um, obstacles are being destroyed in Jesus' name. And we're going to see the hand of God give us the wealth and the treasures that we need. Deuteronomy 8, 18, I give you power to get wealth. Proverbs 10, 22 again, the blessing of the Lord makes me rich. And has no problems with it. No sorrow, no trouble with it. And Proverbs 13, 22, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for me. Isaiah 45, 2 and 3, the treasures of even dark hidden places are coming into my hands. And you said in the third and the fourth verse, fourth verse, that in Isaiah 45, that uh, by this, by me blessing you, you'll know that I'm the Lord your God who calls you even by your own name. He summons us forth by our own name, says, Thomas, come to me, I'm going to bless you and give you these treasures. Wow, I receive them, Lord. On behalf of the work for your kingdom that we're going to do, I receive them for the holy purpose of being able to do everything you've ordained me to get done and all that you've ordained your precious chosen servants and good people to get done. We have no blessing for the underminers, liars, cheaters, illicit people, wrong people, evil people, even preachers, even in the church, all kinds of mess and nonsense. We've seen it all around. We, we, have, we, have, we have no promise except to say, repent, lest thou burn forever. Repent and escape the judgment, or else you're going to receive the judgment. But we, have, we don't want to dwell on all that nonsense, what people are doing, the bad things that people do. We're focusing on this, the treasures, the good things, the good people. In these, I want to say it again, in these golden bars, I see the faces of humanity around the planet Earth. What, a, what an amazing vision I'm having right now. I see it. I see it. I see it. Mambranchele Sayato. Monsalashi. Wow. The faces of people. Multitudes. Multitudes in the valley of decision, waiting for the manifestation of us, the sons of God. Glory to God. Love you much. Let the Lord be magnified. And we're going to see the favor of God like we've never seen. It's going to be just beyond what we ever asked or thought. Are you ready for it? The treasures and the wealth are coming. I'm Thomas Manton IV. I'm praying for you. Sow a seed into this anointing. The links and ways to sow are in the headings of the title. And I look forward to hearing from you. I'll be praying for you as you partner with this anointing. The Lord bless you and make his face to shine upon you, keep you well, and show you his peace, but also his power and his prosperity. And that is the will of God for you. God bless you. I'll talk to you on the next one. Be blessed. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, 
you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.